<clears throat> Hello there. So, um, I'm just going to make a quick video. Uh, um, it's going to be an unboxing of some filament from Filament 3D. Uh, I've done another video on this on the blue filament uh, that I got from them. Um, but I have decided to take that one down because I had some incorrect information in it. Um, make a new, better video now that I've got a tripod for my uh, DSLR. And, um, yeah, I think I am. Um, that's about it. So, this is the uh, box, the filament from Filament 3D comes in. This uh, little damage to the box down here was me when I put it on my bike. Um, so let's get it opened, I guess. I am actually filming this right next to the kitchen, but the way I've put up my table means I can't get in my knife drawer. So that's just, oops, I'm pulling the camera. It's already going great. There we go. So, let's hope you're still in focus. Anyways, I'm going to keep this side away from you as much as possible because that has my uh, information and everything. Now, um, the first thing you might notice with these, with these boxes is that they have a window in the side so you can see what color you got. But more importantly, I think uh, the people on the storage facility can see uh, what color they're picking off of the shelf. Um, I live in Denmark, so that's probably good for them, but just like any other package uh, here in Denmark, if you order before 12, 14, um, you'll have it the day afterwards, um, well, the next work day. So, let's get this opened. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, PETG, uh, 1.75mm transparent. They guarantee 0.02mm um, tolerances, so it's one75 plus minus 0.02 millimeters. They have a recommended nozzle temperature, 200C to 240C, 75 to 85C. Um, those are the recommended nozzle temperatures. Um, yeah, that's about it on the box. Yeah. So let's get this opened. Um, and I push it that nice and good. And if some of you really care, you can try and stitch out and find out my name, because that's what's written in the uh, red marker up here. So, I don't believe I got this in the last box, but uh, there's a nice uh, business card here with a uh, QR code on the back. Now, I'm not going to scan because I don't really care much for QR codes. They are troublesome. Yeah, order before 15 and it'll be sent the next day. Uh, you'll have it the next day. Um, no wait, this might not. It might be two-day shipping, but it's no more than that. Uh, which is still nice. Uh, they have a lot of filaments, according to their. I guess you can read that yourself, or you can go check out their website. But yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, then there's a, an order invoice and a piece of candy. Neat. Um, and then when you take out the back here, you have a vacuum sealed spool of filament and a box. The spool of filament has the same temperature recommendation up here, and um, they have the logo there, which looks like word art, but to each their own. Um, <laughs> so, let's open this. Now they have a very fancy uh, spool design, um, I, I quite like it, it has this 3D thingy going on. Um, and then I pack it up silica gel in there, who cares. Uh, well, it's nice I guess if there's a bit of a leak. Um, the spool seems intact, I have some spools from other sources where they have had big chunks broken out of, but um, this is my second spool from Filament, three, uh, Filament Squared 3D, and uh, that hasn't been an issue yet. Uh, so it's cello wrapped around here. Let's see if I can get that off. <laughs> there we go. Now, PTG. Why? Oh, this actually feels different than the blue stuff. It feels nice. Um, 
What's so special about PTG? So, I have printed some blue stuff before. Here's a one-handed bottle opener. I went for the one without a coin, just to just start it, test this out uh, as much as possible. Uh, the bottle caps have eaten off uh, a bit here. Um, and it's not as effective anymore, so you probably shouldn't print this print without the coin insert. It's a pattern thing of us. But it's printed with 25% uh, infill and it still does great. Uh, when I did this in PLA I had to use 100% infill or it would break in here. So that's great. Um, not my head sent shot. Pretty head. No. Um, here's the blue stuff I had uh, earlier. Let's take the end that hasn't been uh, crunched up. Uh, it's probably easy to show in the blue stuff here, but if I bend this uh, as sharp as I can, so I'll try and see that. It doesn't discolor, it doesn't snap, it does deform a bit, as you might be able to see. Uh, with my diesel, I have no way to check the uh, money around the back, so I'm just gonna have to hope for the best. Um, but uh, yeah, so a bit of plastic deformation, and if I keep wiggling this, I will eventually, but it'll take a while. Mm. I will eventually make a bunch of really thin strands, but yeah, there we go, finally, got it all. So that's the blue stuff, uh, I printed quite a bit of parts with that. Um, Here's the clear stuff, let's try and do the same bend test. Um. And. Ow. Okay. So <laughs> it's very strong. Um, I bend this all the way around. And that's what you get. It's pretty. And the spool wants to go places. Um, it's not allowed to. So let me get my calibers and I'll check out the uh, accuracy of uh, the diameter of these. So, I have some cheap Chinese ca uh, calibers here, they're not the best, but uh, they work. Um, So 1.73, that's within the uh, 0.02 um, millimeter tolerance. And if I rotate this while I'm keeping pressure on it, let's see, let this go. Mm, let's see, if it went on down to 1.72 before, but it's not doing that now. So it does look like it's it's really circular. It's not oval. Um, yeah, but that's been my experience as well. You can just go over to it, you can take a measurement, and that's going to be your measurement. Um, let's see what it does when it goes. So it likes to kind of sometimes go between 0 0.00 or 0 0.01. So that's probably where the variance is coming from. Um, yeah, they just did it. But um, so, all in all, um, the blue stuff was great to print with. I just put it in my printer. I put the uh, temperature somewhere in between the recommended. Uh, let's see, the recommended was... No, actually I put it at 230, 235 or 240, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, just because um, I'm building a new 3D printer and I, uh, I'm printing structural parts for it. So I want them to be as strong as possible with the best layer bonding. So I want hot instead of cold. Uh, um, a cooler printing temperature might give you better bridges, uh, though I can just get some parts that I printed and show them all. Now, I'm going to put this shoe box out here. I'm going to take out the parts here. Now, this is a part I printed. I will just check the monitor quickly. Uh, I can flip it up a bit like that. That does help. So, this is the part I printed. Um, I guess I can zoom in a bit on that now that I'm up here. Um, this is how it looks. This is, um, well, this was my first print. And one of these was the second print, and they're pretty much identical. I printed three of these. These are idlers for a uh, Delta printer. The idler is going to go here. But yeah, so. Um, 
If you take a look at the side here, these overhangs printed fine. And uh, minimal cleanup really. Uh, the worst overhangs are probably here. But I attribute that to my printer uh, instead. So uh, just for reference, I'll find some ABS pots uh, that I've printed as well. These are purple ABS. These are the best pots I've got in ABS. Um, and as you can see, my lighting's not the greatest. And yeah, that's about the quality I get with ABS. Um, so yeah, I really, I really like PGG. It's just it's awesome. I mean, I can't break this. And this is 20-25% in film. Um, I'll take you off the tripod now, and uh, so I'll apologize for the unsteady movement that will follow. Um, but I will take you off the tripod, I will take you over and I will show you my printer. Uh, just after I put this box away. I have a very small apartment, so that doesn't take long. Now, uh, we'll get to see my bed. Uh, this is where I keep most of my filaments in this box with a large bag of desiccant in the bottom. Um, I have a spare power supply here for the new 3D printer. Um, and so I have a filament in here. When I'm printing with the um, PTG though, I usually put it on a, a separate spool holder because there's no real space in here and they're a pain. So it's right change in this spool holder, I need to make a new one. Uh, I, I bought nylock knots. Um, so yeah, I uh, need to figure out something new. Uh, anyways, um, this is black ABS, it runs over here. It runs into my printer right here. It's a Rep Rep Hoxley, I'm running it on 24 volts with a little power supply box here. It puts out uh, 12 volts and 5 volts for fans and controls. It has a... Um, uh, let me get some light in. Bloop. Nothing better than sunlight for filming. It has a uh, heated bed, aluminium, that I just spray um, this Taft Schwarzkopf something green hairspray on. And um, works like a treat. Uh, I print directly on hairspray on aluminium uh, with the heated bed underneath. And then uh, the raspberry pi down there. Um, but yeah, it's just a small 140 by 140 by 60 millimeter um, Hoxley Rep Rep printer, and uh, yeah, printed great on it. I didn't really have to tweak with the retract. I didn't have to tweak with temperatures. I didn't have to tweak anything pretty much. I just put it to the recommended temperatures in the high end and push go, and it went. So uh, thank you for watching this uh, unboxing and I guess a review of the blue stuff. I haven't tried the transparent stuff. The transparent stuff is for a university project, so um, sadly I don't get to play with this. Uh, it has to go towards our project. But oh well, it's an interesting project anyways. Thank you for watching, and uh, bye.